There were there were pagers in my high school. Kids had pagers. But, <laughs> yeah, I know Those you were guys. The sexy kids. Yeah, Those are the rich that's right. kids. You're like, dang, I wish I could get a pager, like a doctor. <laughs> dang, somebody wants them to call them. <laughs> that's right. Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. I'm your host, Austin Lopesavero, and I'm here with Chris Ball, Zach McElwain, and Roger Short. The LIA podcast takes you into the conversations of top producing life insurance agents so that you can level up your business. For episode notes and resources, visit liapodcast.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Life Insure Acad. We're also excited to now offer text notifications. So if you would like to get episode releases and resources, all you have to do is send LIA to the number 82149. It's 82149. And in the message part, type the letters LIA. Now hit send. And you should have gotten a welcome message from us and you're all set up. Awesome. So let's get started. Today is the first episode of the month, which means we'll be discussing a topic that you, our audience, submitted. Now, this month we had an overwhelming response from agents requesting that we talk about the phone again, like we did on episode 11, Mastering the Phone for Appointment Setting. Now, they're, they're not really too interested in appointment setting right now. They want to take it to the next level. So today we'll be discussing telesales and how you as an agent can successfully make the transition from face-to-face sales to over the phone. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Austin. And isn't it weird that everybody's asking this question at the same time? (laughs) I mean, what are the odds on that? But, uh, we know that the truth is that this is coming from a bigger question right now that, uh, agents are, you know, uh, asking about is how will coronavirus or, COVID-19, how's that going to impact me, my family, my business? Is there still opportunity? Um, I know for us, uh, if they can't see our surroundings right now, but we're each in our own little domains <laughs> in our own little bubbles. Uh, I know you guys are, isn't that right? We're all here. Looks we're like all the here. Don. <laughs> He's got all of his <laughs> books behind him. <laughs> There's many leather bound books. It smells like mahogany in my office. <laughs> You just you just need a fedora and a big cigar. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. I could do that. Go on. But so yeah, if you if you do notice a, a change in the audio, uh, you know we're not in our polished studio, um, but we do have a lot to talk about today around this topic. Um, Roger, is there still an opportunity out there, even though we're stuck in our homes? There's definitely an opportunity out there. In fact, uh, in speaking with some of our insurance carrier partners just this last week. Uh, insurance sales are up, <laughs> up 20 to 25% in some cases over production submitted previous weeks prior to the last two. Obviously, we're a couple of weeks into this now, and it's amazing. These, you know, the insurance companies are trying to be responsible and social distancing and moving their support staff off site. They're working remote. At the same time, they're taking this increase in production, this influx of business coming in. People are concerned about their life insurance. People are concerned about their family members having life insurance. And at the same time, everybody's not supposed to be seeing one another. So there's this dichotomy, this this, this weird thing that's happening where uh, the tension is real and agents are trying to figure out how to make that transition so that they can continue to serve families in this time now more than ever, uh, but doing it in a different way than they've been uh, used to. So um, yeah, let's jump in and talk about this. So with, with all of this, um, you know, to our listeners, you might hear us kind of high level touching a lot of these topics. Uh, we could go deeply into any of these, uh, topics that we're going to discuss today. And I think, you know, we, we might be over the, the next coming weeks. We know this is a big topic, um, that new agents and existing agents are facing. So, um, if you feel like we're, um, just scraping and you want us to dive more, let us know in the comments, let us know um, online, send us a message, um, and we, we would love to get your feedback. What do you want to know more about? Um, but we're going to cover a lot today, so um, get, get that coffee. Uh, and uh, Chris, why don't you start us off? You always say it always starts before you even walk out the door. Does that still apply for telesales? If they're not walking out the door. <laughs> yep, 100% man. And uh, I 
I was thinking about this and we've had this conversation with, with our agents about our mindsets and how we approach our work. Um, and instead of walking out our door, we're walking into doors, you know, like for some people, I, I know everybody's got a different setup and Rod, uh, Zach's going to talk about the specifics of workspace here in a moment. But as far as my mindset, um, and, and I think it's a transferable mindset, uh, I have an office that is designated for work. And um, when I walk through that, that threshold, I have gone to work like that is I went to work, guys. I'm going to work, guys. I even joke about it. I'll pop out and grab a Diet Coke in the, the kitchen or, you know, grab lunch and eat out there. And, uh, you know, Lisa will Lisa will say, uh, well, Dad, you know, Chris is going to work or dad's going to work. And I'll go back in my office and shut the door. And uh, that's I'm in my workspace. There's no distractions. Uh, you know, I can't run to the store real quick. I'm taking care of Bidness. That's B I D dash N E S S. Bidness. Bidness. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> and so that's my focus. And then on the, the other side of that, I have a sense of, uh, ex- I have some expectancy. Like I expect something to happen as a result of the work that I'm doing. Like I expect people to talk to me. I expect people to answer their phone. I expect people to need uh, life insurance, either more insurance, uh, better insurance, or new insurance. I, I'm expecting those type of results. So I'm not doing this with an attitude like, man, I really hope, you know, nobody's going to answer the phone. Um, you know, I, I don't think, uh, I mean, do people really want this? Do they really want to talk about life insurance? Well, while they're on the phone, I'm not coming in with this negative attitude because that's going to affect a my activity and what I do, and then it's going to affect how I close because uh, uh, you guys may have not been introduced to the insecure salesman, but it's somebody we talk about regularly. <laughs> but the insecure salesman always closes in a question like, Mr. Short, are you sure this is the type of insurance that you want? <laughs> you know, his voice always goes up a little bit. And it's always not certain. And it's because of my attitude or my focus that happens. Like I'm, I'm not expecting results. So that's, that's so important. Then finally, enthusiasm. Like I'm coming in here and if you got a caffeine up and get your, you know, your, as, uh, you know, Austin, this may be a, a swear word to you, but if you need to get your Folgers coffee. Oh, easy. Uh, I'm sorry. Easy. But I'm sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> he went there. But I will Gosh. say, Austin, your 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 pour over, man. When you do your pour pour over, um, I want to run through a wall. That is <laughs> a because it tastes so good, and b because it's highly caffeinated. I don't know what the the reason is behind that, <laughs> but I have a sense of enthusiasm. Like I am going to serve people and change lives today. Yahoo, yeah, Chris. Like, I think that's have a the, great attitude. About that's it. exactly what it is, right there. Is is that servant mindset? It's so easy in what's going on in, in this world right now to to look internally or to say, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Instead of thinking about what are your clients thinking of? Because most of the clients that we serve are in that um, that age demographic that's more susceptible to this virus anyways. you know, Why don't we check on them? Why don't we see what we can do for them or how, what they might need, even if it's just a new copy of of their policy, having that mm-hmm. mindset that you're going to, um, you know, reach out to them and just check in on somebody as if you would check in on your mom if she was sick or a family member, right? Instead of turning and looking internal. Well said. Absolutely. Well said. Um, with that um, mindset, though, you know, you can have the greatest mindset, but if the dog is click clacking around, if the cat's meowing, and your client's like, what's that? Like, you know, workspace does matter in this. We're not going into homes. Zach, how can we prepare our workspace? I think the thing, the first thing is preparing yourself. You know, uh, just like Chris said, you know, he, he walks into that office, he, you know, by Felicia, you know, he don't, he don't worry about anybody, you know, it, it, well, it's Lisa. It's Lisa. Not <laughs> Felicia. It's the same. Felicia. It's the same. It's the same. I dated her in eighth grade, dude. That was a long time <laughs> oh ago. Well, why do you still get upset about it then? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't her name Chris? 
It still hurts. Was that girl <laughs> named Chris? Yeah. Gee. But having that mindset uh, that you are that you have that dedicated workspace, whether it is an office full of tons of books, like a library, Chris, or <laughs> if it's you know somebody you know simpler, you know, just if it's a bedroom that was converted into an office or you put up a temporary table, I don't recommend setting up an office in the living room of your home where you have all the traffic and and access to all the doors going in and out because that means you're also going to have access to all the distractions of your of your life going on. Um, so you We're need to the find, kitchen with all the snacks, and right? The cheese Jeez, we already we already <laughs> eat enough. So I put my office the in Corona the basement. Fifteen, bro. <laughs> Corona Fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, my office is in the basement. So if I go get a snack, I got to go up the steps and back down the steps. So I get a uh, little <laughs> calorie exercise. Little workout. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just you have to. The you have to, but you yep. have to be able to seclude yourself in the way. Like for me. You know, I have you know two monitors going. I have all my telecell scripts that I need right here next to me. I have all my carrier supplies that I might need to go through something. We have an um, unbelievable website that I have everything at my fingertips. But I got pens, I got papers, I got tiny little notepads that allow me to take notes. And, uh, you know, while I'm talking to my clients, I literally have everything I could possibly want right here, right in front of me. And guess what? It's all organized. It's all separated. It's it's where I need it because for me personally, the type of person I am, if it's a cluttered mess and I'm looking for something, I'm never going to be in the right mindset or sharp enough or ready or responsive enough for my clients to be able to handle maybe an objection or a question or you know move into an application smooth because at any point in this process that I'm hitting a speed bump or hiccuping you know hiccuping it's I don't want it to affect me right mm-hmm. so having that workspace is is crucial it is is crucial uh, we actually have an agent uh, that has <laughs> eliminated his distractions <laughs> by turning his office into the front seat of his car in his driveway while he's home <laughs> you know uh whatever it takes it doesn't matter um if yeah, you have you to, all the kids running around in the house it can it can get loud and if there's no room to escape to you know and and he's going out to his car like he did every other day you know there's yeah. some sort of familiarity to him yeah, I think it's actually car. helped him his focus and thinking that way because that is that is his mobile office in most cases, and he doesn't uh, you know he doesn't want to um, be in the home and and deal with those things we were exactly you know we were talking about loud televisions uh, and and encroaching on the other people's space while they're there and uh, being able to go out in his car and spend six to eight hours on the phone. I mean, he's seeing results as a. a you know, for the focus that he's putting into it, that's for sure. It's pretty cool. It, it, it was funny. It was funny when I, when I spoke to him last week, uh, and I spoke to Jay, and we're talking about a, a good, a great agent of ours that works with us, been with us for a long time. And um, he said, "Man, there's too many kids in the house. <laughs> like everybody's home from school. <laughs> you're probably in the same situation. If you're listening and you've got a family and your kids are all running around in the house, and maybe you're in a two or three bedroom apartment or a smaller home." Like you're overrun. There's dogs. There's kids. Where do you set up? So there's no safe mm-hmm. place if you don't have a finished basement or somewhere to go. Like where do you set that up? He said, "Man, this is perfect." I said, "I, I at least expect that you're in the passenger seat." <laughs> he said, "That would be weird for people to walk by and see me in the passenger seat with the car running in the driveway <laughs> in Michigan in the winter or in the spring. You know, when it's still cold out." He said, "No, I'm in the driver's seat." <laughs> he said, "But I got everything set up. It's perfect. I got. I'm good." It's so That's easy awesome. with everybody home and your family's home to say, oh, well, uh, you know, we're just going to go outside and play or, or we're going to go do this or we're going to do that. And, or, the, you know, you're now the babysitter. Like for me, you know, I have a little, a little girl at home and we still have a babysitter um, every day, even though I'm working from home. Um, you know, and, and and I am available for emergencies, but I separate myself and my time to pour into work so I can provide for my family. So I can get ahead of this and, and adapt and, and to be able to provide support for other agents out there that are trying to do the same transition. We mm-hmm. can't expect to um, hop on the phone for an hour or two in the evening, you know, after everything is settled and done and to be able to hit the same numbers and production goals that we've set for ourselves even before this COVID-19. Yeah, if you've gone from, you know, being a, a high-performance producer face-to-face and now you're at home and you're, you're 
playing the role of uh, dad and work at the same time, you've you've reduced yourself to a fifteen dollar an hour job uh, that someone else who would be highly engaging with your kids for all day can do that. Especially now when there's people looking for work, uh, what a great opportunity to to uh, to have someone be with your be with your kids and to help them even with their schoolwork and stuff like that that they're not getting because they're not in classes so that you can focus on your business. Uh, you, you have to prioritize. You can't say, well, we're uh, I'm going to I'm going to cover all the bases. It just won't work. You you have to you have to you have to uh, dial in and uh, prioritize your focus and where your highest earning potential comes from. I, I love the fact that Jay is doing that in his car. I believe last week he wrote over 7 applications and read around 42 or 4300 dollars in production. Yeah, and uh, was loving it. Was loving it, and he wasn't even out there every day. But uh, you can make great things work when you decide to focus and prioritize. So, if you've prepared um, and you're ready to start making the call, the question is, who do I call? Um, Jay from Louisiana had quite a few questions around leads. Are there leads specifically for telesales? Where does he even start with um, knowing who to call? Well, the first thing is remembering what a lead is, right? A lead is just an opportunity to have a conversation with somebody about insurance. Now, when you think about who that might be, who that might be, well, that can, you know, the most important is your existing book of business. Because your existing book of business values and loves their family, and they value and understand the importance of having coverage on their loved ones. If they didn't, they wouldn't have coverage in the first place. So that's 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 a the number one lead source. And so if if you're when we're talking about existing book of business, what are some ways that people can if let's say they've not kept records of who that is, how can they find out who that book of business is to reconnect with them? Well, one of the things that you can easily do is um, obviously if you're writing business with one or two carriers, which is what we would primarily recommend anyway that you just keep one or two maybe three as your as your primary carriers that you're going to go to those agent those uh, client webs or so the the carrier websites uh, generally will have a complete uh, list of your client base and so uh, the the ones that are uh, that we really like are the ones where you can actually download a report and now you have a complete database uh, if you're not with a company that uh, has a CRM you've not maybe store them in Google Sheets or your own CRM, uh, you can go to the carrier websites and download them, or you can even request that they send you a report um, to put together that list. Uh, obviously, you know, there's some people that, like, they've got piles of leads in boxes. Uh, they've got leads still in their back seat under the floorboard of their car. I mean, there's all... Trust me, we've seen everything. And so, Austin, when you, when you think about... Um, if you've been in the business for any time at all, you've probably worked through a series of leads. And anybody that has not been sold previously, um, and even if they have been sold, is an opportunity for a phone call and a conversation. So compile them all. Do whatever you have to do to compile the biggest list of leads, um, You know, unsold, unretired, whatever you want to categorize those. Put them together. Get them into some workable format so that you can... Uh, load them in and start working through that list. We use a a product, uh, an app, a simple app that you can download for most smartphones called TurboScan. And TurboScan, uh, for those of you who've worked with paper applications on face-to-face sales and have submitted all your business uh, to the carriers, uh, TurboScan is a great way for you to, to scan those apps, but it also allows you to store them uh, in the cloud and have a complete record, a digital record of your paper applications. You can sort by client name, you can sort by carrier, and you can access it that way. So um, start thinking ahead if you've not done that so far, but these are different places where you can go to access and uh, build your um, your lead base from what you already have. This is not even including any new leads that you might acquire. And you, if you've done e-apps, um, the, there's a good possibility that those have been stored also uh, with your carriers. If you want to go back and look at the details of the applications, um, and you know it's different conversations of, and we'll get into this, but of existing book of business that's been on the books, and then maybe you had some business that fall off, fell off. But regardless, these people need uh, need to have a chat. Now, a lot of our listeners, um, you know, are new agents. Uh, in fact, we have Chelsea from Idaho, 
Uh, she says, I'm a brand new agent looking for ways to establish new relationships with clients through our social distancing. Guys, what are some affordable ways that new agents like Chelsea can build their lead base during quarantine periods? Um, there's there's a couple ways that we can, well, there's many, many ways. I mean, there's people everywhere. But uh, first of all, I think we can look into our, our warm market. Uh, these are people that we have relationships with and there's uh, this great thing called uh, the Facebook machine and <laughs> you put stuff in it and stuff comes out. Um, but uh, you know, people are on social media like crazy right now. And it's, it's not like there's, there's a lot of um, marketing that's happening, but uh, and there is, I guess there is, but there's a lot of people, you know, just checking in with their families and, you know, seeing what's going on in the world, talking about, uh, the the issues that we're all facing and you know their little projects. They're definitely people are definitely online more now oh than my ever. Gosh. Like twenty four yeah. seven, they're playing mm-hmm. games online. They're social networking with their families. Yeah, they're, what was that game you talked about playing the other night, Austin, with your family? Uh oh yeah, it was um it was called House Party. It's an app where you can do like trivia over video chat. Oh, that's yeah. great! Yeah. Yeah. Like I'll you know that heads up that. game. You know yeah. you can play that. Out. Yeah. Uh, so people are online, Chris. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Facebook is one of the biggest opportunities right now to reach out I would for, agree. for a warm market, yeah. especially your own network. Yeah, yep. And and just having a conversation and uh, making a post about uh, the possibility of having a conversation about uh, life insurance, maybe a review a policy they haven't looked at or they haven't considered it until now. People only buy, I mean, they typically buy life insurance seven times in their lives. And it's usually when uh, big events happen in their lives, whether it's having a baby, a new house, a marriage, getting older, retirement, and, you know, world events. So uh, having a post about that, I know in our organization, uh, we help agents uh, develop a personalized page that talks about uh, them specifically as an agent and the services that they provide. It's designed for social media. Um, if you don't have that, uh, you probably need to look into something like that because it adds credibility to you as well. So um, there's great resources for that. Uh, also, um, maybe you want to invest in some leads. And this doesn't have to be a uh, super... Uh, costly for you. Um, there are there are organizations that that may help supplement some of those lead costs. I know uh, we uh, we do that. We supplement lead costs for new agents. I know there are some groups that um, that do sell leads. We do partner with an organization that provides leads for us. And there are ways around uh, paying a huge amount for a lead. Like during this time, maybe you don't want to spend thirty to thirty five dollars per lead. Uh, on a direct mail lead and uh, you you are like eh, you know that's a tough a tough pill to swallow but at the same time maybe you do have some direct mail leads you haven't been able to knock on those doors and you ordered some don't be afraid to call them like just go ahead I mean they're honestly most people if they say no to you and hang up it could have been a bad day maybe they got an argument with somebody maybe they're just sick of socially distancing and uh you can just when this is all said and done take that same lead go knock on the door introduce yourself you know fist bump whatever that's still an amazing lead chris even when you say talk about using the facebook machine it doesn't always have to be a post you know you can just pick up your phone and and do a quick little video of just explaining, you know, what's going on and oh, yeah. and how you're able to help people and if they need anything they can reach out and you know send that out to all your warm market but the biggest impact that I would you know that you would receive from that may not be your warm market. You may be saying, well, my warm market, they all have insurance or they're 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 all taken care of, but it may be the warm market of your warm market or the warm market of that warm market. A big thing we always say is, you know, our role is just to give them the information, right? So, like, we are educating them. Um, and as insurance agents, you know, we've gone through training, we've gone through, um, you know, the licensing process. We know more than your average person. So, even if the post is just, hey, you know, there's a lot going on in the world right now, if you have questions around life insurance or you want to, just understand what it is and what it covers, right? Like it doesn't have to be a full sale. It's just, hey, I know a lot of people, you know, don't know about this. I'd love to answer your questions and let that start the conversation. Kind of like the lead card. It's it's pretty minimal information. It's vague. 
Same way with Facebook. It doesn't have to be a huge post where you're making the sale in the post. Austin, if I didn't know any better, I would say you've made some life insurance related Facebook posts and wrote some apps off of it. <laughs> <laughs> but even like Chris, when you talk about buying some leads, uh, the lead cost is only relative to your mindset. If your mindset is limited, then your lead cost is expensive. And what I mean by that is if you're buying a lead, regardless of the price, and it's just one opportunity for one person that filled it out, well, yeah, that is an expensive lead. But if you're buying a lead and you're knocking on uh, the doors of next door or you're asking after the sale, regardless if you get it or not, about referrals and who else you might be able to help, um, you know, all of a sudden you got two or three or four, four leads out of that one paper lead, well, divide the cost up. Um, and not only that, a quick way to segment into that is you're already getting, if you are moving forward and if, you know, uh, with a presentation over the phone or in the home or however you're doing it, you know, you can simply ask them now who, who would be a beneficiary on a plan like this? And now you're getting a name or a couple names. Now what, what's their phone number? You're now you're able to gather their phone number information um, because at the end of the day, if you are getting an app, you may say, you know, well, I'm going to give them a call just to let them know what we set up for you, so they are aware that you do have a policy in force, and they and I want to introduce myself to them and let them know that if anything they ever need or when that day does come, that they can just reach out to me directly, and I'll make sure everything is taken care of. These are easy segments to leads in relationships. If if there is opportunity, right, plenty of people to call. Um, one question that we're getting is how do I get more people to answer my calls, right? Plenty of people out there to call. If we're making calls, how do you get more people to answer? Uh, there's a, this is a little tricks to the trade. <laughs> That's a $19, so, is a $19 answer. $19 <laughs> answer here. Uh, number one. I always thing forget. That, is it nineteen ninety nine or nineteen? Well, this is discounted because of Corona, oh, so it's going to be okay. nineteen. The nineteen dollars, nineteen ten percent you're, off. You're nice. welcome, America. Okay. Um, oh my God. <laughs> the uh, one little one little helpful uh, trick uh, tip here is uh, use a local prefix when you're calling numbers. So if you're in, uh, we'll use a Michigan number for example. You know, a six one six and number and you're calling 517 um or or let's say you have indiana indianapolis leads or you know you were in that area near there a little while ago then it's a 317 prefix if you're calling from an uh, a number uh, outside of that area they more than likely aren't going to answer it because it's probably somebody they don't know um so uh you can call from a local prefix and there's all sorts of different um, applications that you can use directly on your cell your cellular device uh, your cell phone um, and uh, little apps that you can use I use one uh, called burner that uh, I've got a subscription that allows me to use um, a number uh, for for Indiana because that's another market we use when I'm in other states uh, like Louisiana or South Carolina then I, I get one for a temporary period of time to use in those states for those local numbers. Um, that's that's worked for me uh, so much better than than calling from my from my um, Kentucky number. Highly yeah. recommend it. There's I mean there's so many there's so many robo dials right now. Right? right. If if you're not on a list where someone's trying to sell you an extended warranty on your car, trying to help you pay off your student loans, trying to help you consolidate your debt trying to help you find out about uh, health insurance uh, or some other random thing where you're just putting one of those auto dialing sequences and when you pick up it's it's not even a real person people just start to tune out those other numbers so in addition to using a local prefix uh, Chris another thing that we found really effective it's called call sequencing call sequencing what does that mean well if you're dialing through your list okay and you have 200 people compiled of any leads that you have had in the past that you've never closed new leads old leads uh, reworked your existing client base whatever it is and you've, you've got them in a spreadsheet um, and you're calling through don't just start calling one two three four five and get down to 20 and 24 and 26 and say boy nobody's answering the phone how do i get people to answer the phone understand that call sequencing allows you to catch the attention of people who are used to getting these robo dials 
what is call sequencing? We'll call numbers one through five and then go back and call one through five again. Because if you dial one through five, it only takes you about 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds maybe, uh, maybe a minute, depending on uh, you know if you're what you're doing in there. But if you go right back immediately and dial one through five again, the person on the other end sees that it's the exact same number showing up the second time immediately after the first call attempt. Um, so you're going to call one through five, then one through five, then six through ten, then six through ten. Then you're going to go back and call one through ten. That allows you to call three times, literally within uh, a minute or two, to let people know that it is not a robo dial. It is someone trying to get a hold of them, and they are much. Uh, they have a much higher likelihood of picking up the line. Statistics show, and we have direct correlated results that people will pick up the phone if they see that number showing up multiple times within a minute or so. RoboDial's plans and progressive dollars don't work like that, and that's a way to differentiate yourself with that call sequencing. So we did have another question you know, kind of related to this um, call sequencing. Like, when, when should agents be calling? What's the best time for them to call during this telesales opportunity? I think any time. I think any time. Uh, right now, everyone's home. So it's not like, you know, this is when they're going out normally or they're, uh, they're home. So like when you wake up in the morning, if it's daylight, it's probably okay to start calling. Uh, it's okay to call into the evening till 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock even uh, to set appointments for virtual calls. You can call up till 9 p.m. and just say, we're working late. We're trying to get caught up and I wanted to reach out to you. I'm setting up appointments for tomorrow. Um, you know, we can go ahead and get you set up for 8.30 or 9 a.m. tomorrow morning uh, for me to call back and do this quick health assessment review for your uh, for your life insurance benefit. So there's, I, I think it's all a good time. I don't know if you guys think any differently, but I think right now, while this is going no, yeah, on, no question. Just, I mean, what else are people doing? The worst thing you can do is to not call at all. I mean, I just, <laughs> just the other day, I was just picking up the phone and the, the second person, the first person that answered the phone was the second person I called. I called a, a, a lady out here in Kentucky that uh, had, uh, her policies have lapsed um, uh, about a little while back. And, you know, just for one reason or another, and I know we're all guilty of it, where none of us uh, are perfect at following up on all of our business. And I think this corona and being at home allows us to have an opportunity to reconnect with our clients, um, our existing business, our fall-off business, because I know we can get caught up in the day-to-day, whether we're, whatever we're running, uh, mortgage protection or final expense or new leads. And it's it's easy to forget about our existing clients, our clients that you know, once trusted us and put us put a help we help them put a plan in place, and they're no longer on the books. And a lot of agents just don't want to feel that anxiety or have to worry about calling them. Um, I literally dialed her, and as soon as I got on the phone, she said, "Oh yeah, we had we canceled those policies a long time ago. Um, is there any way you can send somebody out here? Or can you come back to see me? I got to get these policies right back on the books." <laughs> wow. All I said was hello to her. <laughs> you know, I was like, wow, yeah. you know, I was like, you know what, you know, Miss Shirley, that's not going to be an issue. Just uh, hey, bear with me for just a few minutes. We'll see what we can do to get you back on the books. Like I had a full script ready to go through for a uh, fall off business to help, um, you know, remind them how important it was and, and who their beneficiaries were and the plans we had set up with them and to walk them through the process of getting them qualified. But, you know, as Roger said, this this craze that's going on, the insurance uh, companies are, are are seeing an increase, and literally we can get all worked up in our heads and sit at our computers and not do anything, or or just go outside and take walks all day long and think about what we're going to do, or we can just pick up the phone and check in on our clients or check in on the people that f- that that have fallen off the books for whatever reason, um, or start picking up the phone and calling our new leads and just having a conversation. The people that we would normally prejudge or say, oh, I'm not going to call them or I'm not going to go see them until the evening because they're probably working, well, they're probably home now. You can't use that excuse. You know? <laughs> yeah, I would say, I would say uh, a good time to call is really any time before uh, you know bedtime, like 10, 10 p.m. Uh, the best time to call is when you don't want to. Exactly. <laughs> and, and guys, guess what? If they are working from home, like we are, uh, they'll tell you, but generally you can still reach them, especially if you're calling two or three times using that call sequencing, and you'll be able to get a hold of them and say, when's the best time to call you back so we can discuss this and I can get you taken care of. 
Um, it, again, if you treat it like you're just trying to find people at home for that door knock and you're doing the same thing on the phone, uh, what better way to sit in your, you know, in your office or in your car and look, especially this time of year when everything's greening up and it's pretty outside, and just take advantage of the fact that you're not burning gas. You're not trying to find people who may or may not be home. You're trying to prejudge leads, like Zach said. You're just calling, picking up the phone and calling. So anytime's a good time to call us. Is there a case, um, like I, I want to ask kind of two questions. One is when you're making these calls, are you um, going through the sale then or are you setting appointments Um and then two, if you don't get a hold of someone after call sequencing and multiple uh, rounds of call sequencing, uh, what can you do? Um, I'll answer the last part of that. The, the call sequencing part is um, you can leave a voicemail and I don't think there's a hard and fast rule for this. I just try to keep it as um, simple as possible. So I'll say, hey, Roger, it's Chris. Uh, just give me a call back. My number is this. And that's it. Uh, same thing. You want to uh, sound like their old high school buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it for me. The other part is uh, you can uh, use uh, the text machine oh. as well. The texting <laughs> machine. It's like an old typewriter. You know, you oh. push the buttons. <laughs> Ding. It's like a pager. Um, it's like a pager. Austin. Yeah. Hey, there's Come a call about that pager. Roger, did you ever have a pager? No, no, I didn't have a pager. I was right in the middle. <laughs> like my, my age was... I was like yeah. a little too young for pagers and yeah. you know so yeah I, I I missed it probably by about 2 years. That's right. Well, I'm I'm old enough to you're you're a little older than me but I there were there were pagers in my high school. Kids had pagers. But <laughs> yeah, I know Those you guys. Those were the sexy kids. Yeah, Those are the rich that's kids. Right. You're like, "Dang, I wish I could get a pager <laughs> like a doctor." Dang, somebody <laughs> wants them to call them. <laughs> that's right. So uh, but as far as the texting bit, uh, you're not texting pagers. That's the good news. But you can send a text to a client. Um, you, you had requested some information. I'm from the Benefits Center. I'm just following up. Uh, you can send a picture if you have direct mail leads of of their signature. Um, just want to follow you up with the uh, request that you sent in. Um, I'll, I'll try back in 10 minutes, something like that. Uh, I, like, as you can see, there's no real hard and fast rule. I'll just be creative, be flexible, uh, and adapt. Uh, and I would think that would not necessarily be the first thing you do, you know, to avoid talking to people. <laughs> the first attempt is still to, to have right. a phone call. Yes. This is, this yes. is like exhausting all opportunities. If you've called yeah. sequencing and you've, you you tried everything possible. Shoot a text out, and eight times out of ten, it's going to be a cell phone. So, uh, shoot a quick text out. One of the things that's worked for us uh, and some of our guys in the mortgage business, uh, they'll just uh, shoot a text out, especially if they can't reach people. Following up on your request for information on the available mortgage protection plans on your Wells Fargo loan, um, please text or call back um, at this number with the best time to speak. Um, so we can get this information to you. So you know something as simple as that. Uh, at least it's an effort to try to you know try to get someone to call you back and to respond. And that has worked in in, in situations where uh, today's people are busy. You don't know if they're working from home. What the situation is. Sometimes they have their phone turned off. They're powering it up. It's in the bathroom. Like you, you don't know what the scenario is. So. Uh, exhaust all of your options. Again, lean in to figure out what works. It's best if you make some mistakes, break some stuff, and figure out some stuff, then sit yep. back and try to be perfect in everything you do. I, I would say, you know, take Facebook's model, move fast, break some stuff. <laughs> I like it. So they're making the calls, um, they're getting on the phone with people. How do they establish the credibility um, over the phone? Right, like they they don't have the badge where people can see. Um, what can they do for that credibility piece? I think initially, Austin, it depends on who you're calling. Uh, you know, when you're calling, uh, a, say, existing business or fall off business, there there's a previous relationship there. Now, granted, they might not uh, remember you as well, but when you want to verify their information. And you start, you know, hey, we set you up with the company of Mutual of Omaha, and we had your face amount at twelve thousand. 
um, and your premium was blank and it was on the you know seventh of each month. Like just knowing their information there and re- and and reminding them who you are and when you came out to see them and that you are their life insurance agent or you were the agent that helped them set up a plan before with so and so carrier. That's going to establish instant credibility because oh wow he he knows my information right. It's just like. If somebody called you up and they know your address, your phone number, and your social, and they're calling for, you know, whatever. Um, if you're calling for um, a new business or uh, on new leads or anything of that nature, it's a slightly different uh, because you're not going to be remembering and dropping the beneficiary names and establishing core and that or that rapport and that relationship with them up front. Um, you're wanting them to reference the request so they understand that this isn't just a um, just a robocall or a random cold call that you are there for a request. Um, but you also want to make sure that you know you're going to establish and give them a little bit of what they're wanting. You're going to let them know why you're calling and how you're here to help, and that you've been really busy and checking in on them with the coronavirus. You mean the same three questions that you preach this whole time still apply? That's a, that's exactly right. Who you are, who you're with, and why you're calling, and you're going to have that anchor point, right? Um, especially now, I feel like calling now has been there's a heightened awareness and an urgency that has already been created by this corona. There's a fear. There's a there's an unknown, um, and which could be a really really good thing in this Mm -hmm. and the good thing in it is the fact that people are doing something that they probably should have done and (laughs) uh, this is just and that's the truth you know and and what we are doing is we're giving peace of mind to a situation where they they maybe have um kept saying i'm just gonna kick the can down the road i'll take care of this later i always talk about how people feel good about their intentions. Like they intend to do something and they're almost paying themselves, uh, patting themselves on the back because they, they felt good about intending to do something, which sounds awful, but we all do it. Like, uh, you know, I intend to go on a diet, so I feel pretty good about it, but I'm going to have one last bag of, of Cheetos. (laughs) Right. Uh, but I felt good about the intention about it and I never got onto the diet. So people do the same thing with their life insurance, but man, Corona's here, um, and it made me pay attention. It made me pay attention to take care of the people I love. So uh, that's that's the good in this, and we have to be people who are constantly looking for things to be thankful for and the good in this. And it's not a it's not a good in the sense that it's a money grab. It's a good in the sense that we get to serve human beings to take care of the people they love. I would say also, Austin, you know. When you're calling on people, we, we have, we've always said that, you know, with our own uh, agents that work with uh, our organization here is uh, there's three wins out of every phone call. Number one, you're calling to check in on people and be a human, be a caring person who is a caring, socially responsible human being on this planet who's trying to matter to someone's life. So call and check in. And if they're an existing client of yours, call and ask them how they're doing. Ask how their family's doing, if anyone's sick, if everyone's okay, if they need anything, if they've got someone around them that's supporting them um, and what, the, what that looks like for them and, and express concern and care in, in, in this time. Some of these people, that might be the only call they've, they've gotten. We had an agent reach out to us uh, last week and said that uh, his client teared up and said, thank you so much for calling. And um, when asked what was, you know, why the emotion, he goes, well, my own family hasn't even checked in on me yet. And I mean, these are meaningful wow. moments, right? And so you as a, uh, and one of our mantras here is to be a difference maker. And, and that's being a difference in someone's life, just calling to say, how are you? And check in. So that's the first win. Be a human, check in on people, see how they're doing. Secondly, there's an opportunity to, to add coverage, to review their existing policy, to add coverage, um, and uh, to let them know that they may qualify. I mean, who knows what's going to happen to life insurance underwriting as a result of this. I mean, we're all taking extreme measures right now uh, with uh, stay at place and quarantines and uh, people working from home and telecommuting orders and um, what, what's going to happen with life insurance sales because of, of this as a result of underwriting. 
and qualification. So before any changes could take place, like let's go ahead and see if you can qualify for some additional coverage uh, to protect your family. And then lastly, we're going to confirm their information and verify that we've got all their contact information correct, like Zach said. And uh, we're going to let them know that we um, were there to also service and take care of their family and their friends uh, because we, 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 our phones are ringing off the hook right now at our offices and people calling in to, to check their coverage, to check to see if payments are still in force and if payments are being made. And uh, can you talk to my family? I need you to talk to my sister. I, you know, I have a daughter that needs coverage. Uh, she's on the front lines right now as a, as a healthcare worker and she wants to get some coverage. Can you talk to her? Like there are so many opportunities. So three wins. We're going to check in with those people. You can add on, do a coverage review, and then talk about their family and friends, verify the contact information of their beneficiary so you can reach out to them and also have the same conversation. Um, that, that's a, another strong way to build some credibility and just to uh, establish uh, your process. Mm-hmm. Now, Zach, you always talk about your door knock dance, right? Like when you're in face to face sales um, and telesales, there still kind of is this door knock dance or this phone, this phone tone dance. I don't know what we're calling it. Yeah. So you but. record yourself doing it and you send it to them. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. No, but one thing, if you're feeling any, uh, you know, your client is having any apprehension at all or just you don't feel like you're able to connect or get across that barrier and they haven't opened up and you haven't expressed that you're just a normal guy just like you know them right um, a lot of things that we're we're able to do is say you know miss jones do you have just a moment i want you to get a piece of paper and a pencil out um, and then you can actually give them your national producer number okay um, you know, I would recommend if you're an agent, send them a picture of you. Maybe one that has a picture of you and maybe your family or your dog with it. Not just a, uh, you know, you can send them your business card, but I like to maybe send them the business card and a normal photo of you that just lets them know, hey, I'm just like your neighbor. Um, you know, I know for our agents and what we did, and Austin, you're actually the mastermind behind this, but you've created these uh these personalized web pages that Chris mentioned earlier that you're able to share on Facebook or social media or actually just send a link right to their smartphone. Miss Jones, do you have your phone handy? Are you on a cell phone? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you this link here and it's going to pull up uh, my page and tell you a little bit about what we do and how we're able to help. And you can also see about the company and the difference that we make in other people's lives. Um, and, and it just can kind of share with that and they can look at that and they can see that credibility. They can see it's a real website. Oh, now they can put a face with my voice and they can see what I actually look like. Um, they have my national producer number. So if they want to, they can look up at the, their state's department of insurance to verify that I am licensed in their state to be able to help them with these plans. And I have that credibility and that this is not a scam, um, you know, whatever we need to do to help walk them through that. And we train that and we've actually had a couple agents, brand new agents that have never called anybody before, have felt that apprehension and then went through these steps of credibility. And the, then they were able to build a rapport on a completely different label and and end up getting an application in place for that family and to protect them when they know they need it and want it more than ever with everything that's going on. Um, and that agent was not face to face, brand new, was able to do it completely over the phone and take care of them and address those objections. Um, because not all of us are as attractive as Chris Ball. And when Chris <laughs> Ball knocks on your I door, know. I mean, I all, all the sorry, walls guys. go down, credibility is automatically there. And they it's just. It's just not fair. It's called it's instant trust. Come on, right? Andrew Carey. Oh, this is I, your day on the my... price is right. <laughs> and if you need to, Chris, you know, he'll send you a picture of uh, him and his family for five bucks that you can just send to your clients. <laughs> yeah. So we, we have all kinds of we have all kinds of uh, clients that we're speaking to and there's different processes. I mean, in some situations, we're able to do a video conference call, especially if you're calling a younger family. Maybe it's a mortgage protection lead and you schedule a meeting with them and ask them if they're familiar with accessing, you know, a, a video or a virtual meeting. Um and you can send them a Zoom link if you're using some technology. You can send them a Join Me, uh, WebEx, that go to meeting. Keep it simple, FaceTime. Um, 
You can just use FaceTime. So there's a lot of different uh, processes. Uh, some people don't have iPhones, so they don't have FaceTime. But there's other video call I don't know if options we can cover them. No, for them. Kidding. Google Hangouts, <laughs> uh, I think, right, is, a, is another one. Yep. So there's lots of different video resources that you can use. If you're doing that, you can actually bring up those pages, bring up those that profile page that you have. You can bring up your company website. You can take them to the State Department and show them you know, your, uh, who you are. So there's, there's things that you can do there by sharing screens and letting them see that, and you can control that. If you're dealing with an older client that maybe not uh, as adept you know, with technology, like Zach said, you can send them a text. Most seniors will still have a smartphone. You can send them a text, and they can open that up and, and see it right on their phone. So there's a, a range of what you can do, but there's ways to establish credibility uh, on that, I mean, I had a, I, I worked a mortgage lead just last week, and it was with a, uh, a lady, and she had refinanced um, uh, a condo, and um, I was able to send out the the landing page. She reviewed that. I was able to send out a a link to the uh, carrier uh, that we used. Actually, uh, it was a Forrester's product. Uh, we did. We just did a release on Forrester's Financials, one of the go to must have companies in your bag. I think on our previous episode. And I uh, was able to send her out a link to, to their website, was able to forward a, a couple of PDFs of the brochures that they have. And of course, Austin, you've created this beautiful telesales portal on the back end of, uh, of our website with all these resources in one place. So it's just a, a click, plug and play and send. And it makes stuff very easy. But it, it, was a, it was a great conversation. It was interesting because when she received that, the conversation tone changed. Oh, there you are. Okay, I see who you are. And it was like a, a wall went down uh, immediately. And now we were having a conversation. And then we had to do a policy review. So I got her to FaceTime. I sent her a FaceTime invite. And literally, we were doing a policy review with FaceTime. And she was pointing the phone at her existing <laughs> policy so I could read you know, what type of policy it was. And it was actually a term policy that was uh, increasing and was going to expire here in about five years. So um, we were able to put her into a much better position and get her qualified right then on the phone through an e-app. And uh, it took a little bit longer, but guess what I didn't have? I didn't have any drive time, didn't burn any gas, did it all from the safety and comfort of my office and uh, where I could have my coffee and my, you know, everything I needed. So you can build credibility. Just think outside of the box, use resources that are available to you. The big thing to remember is the five-year-old reasons why people don't buy doesn't just apply to face-to-face sales. It's across the board. Like It applies to telesales, and that first real reason is trust. So right. by doing this credibility piece, you're getting those barriers down via building trust. Um, let's kind of keep moving on in this like presentation-type discussion, or really the conversation discussion. Um, is this conversation over the phone different um does it go differently than you know when you're doing face to face i don't think it's any different i think uh at, at the point you bring it up is different like um whenever you are calling an existing business or fall off business that that talk of um that presentation is going to it's you know it's going to kind of build right behind the trust at the beginning of the call and you're going to kind of move through it and you know lay out the steps and the expectations of getting this policy put back in place um you know whereas if you're calling new business um you're kind of flowing into it right off the bat you're kind of giving them what you know because they're requesting that information they're wanting something if they don't know who you are they're not necessarily going to allow you to spend 20 minutes talking about a relationship and what's going on because they want to get down to it. So you kind of have to reverse it in a way. You want to give them, um, you kind of want to start by going through your door knock and then kind of transition and right into your presentation from there. And then once you're established in that presentation, then that's when you bring that trust building and that rapport and you start getting to know who they are and they start to get to know who you are. Um, and that really will help to finish the presentation and then be able to move towards the close. I think with mortgage, um, it's uh, it's probably going to be a little bit different also. Uh, in, in, in some instances, in probably most instances, you're going to call and schedule that virtual meeting with them. Um, so you're, you're calling to book an appointment 
and you're scheduling a time to do the virtual meeting with them and their spouse, uh, them and the, the you know their significant other that's in the home with them that's that's on the house or on the mortgage and uh, schedule that time together. And then when you get you get them together, you're you're just going to do a, a brief a reminder of who you are while you're calling, and you're going to start qualifying them with their health and uh, finding out which products uh, that they can qualify for. And as you're starting to qualify them, you're then going to start establishing some trust points. Some credibility points, some, um, you know, uh, here's who I am, this is how long we've been doing this, many people do this because, tell me about your family, and a relationship starts to build. So it's a little bit different sequencing from the initial call, but once you move into the call, it's pretty much the same. You're going to follow a slightly different pattern for qualification and, and application, but um, uh, in, in that instance, you're doing the preset for the appointment um, as opposed to jumping right into the new sale opportunity. In some cases, a mortgage client may be ready to go right then and there, and you kind of have to gauge that, but a lot of them will, you'll be setting an appointment for that virtual meeting or that phone meeting. So I know we wanted to get into scripts today um, and call control and telesales carriers. Um, we, ha- we have quite a few more questions, and we're already... Um, getting pretty deep into this episode. So let's cover that next week um, on next week's episode. Um, But as we wrap today, I want to ask maybe the biggest question that might be on these agents' minds is, can I really be successful in telesales? Austin, 100%. 100%. In fact, there are some organizations that only do telesales. We have groups that work with us that only do telesales and before uh, this before this yeah before this they've they've transitioned to selling final expense and mortgage protection over the phone most of them are in the final expense space because it is a market that is continuing to expand and it's a market that be, that can be reached digitally now whereas one time you could only reach them through direct mail now they're on Facebook um, and so the cost of lead acquisition is lower and uh, there are now systems set up with CRMs, dialing programs, call transfers, uh, and you can plug and play. It's generally a call center, um, and they, some of those centers have had to adapt uh, to in-home remote. But if if there are whole organizations built and structure around this, for you to think that you cannot be successful on the phone, uh, that's that that would be not a, a correct thought. And so. Uh, right now, lean in because if there's any time you can be successful, people understand the sensitivity of not coming to see them and why it's important to do it over the phone. And you can lean into that pretty hard. So that's 100% r- right now, better than ever. And if you're an agent out there and you are not currently plugged into an organization and you want to dive uh, completely into telesales exclusively, please reach out to us. We can connect you with an, a great organization right away to get you up and running and have you set up from home to, to go live uh, within a few days. So uh, don't hesitate to reach out. We've got great partners that work with us here, and we'd be happy to recommend you uh, and, uh, and turn you on to, to some great platforms that are already in place. And of course, when we talk about these things, anyone in telesales or, you know, in any type of sale is going to tell you uh, that it's a numbers game. You just have to work through the numbers and uh, there's really no emotion attached to it. Uh, you got to keep your enthusiasm up, your attitude up. Uh, you, are, you have an expectation that people are going to answer, that they're going to buy. But guess what? Some people won't answer their phone. Some people will say no. Some people will hang up. And that's A-OK. You just got to work through the numbers. Well, that's all we have time for today. Um, Next week, we'll talk about scripts, call controls, the best carriers to have for telesales. So make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening. Give us a five-star rating. If you have any questions on some of the topics that we discussed today on today's show, you can go to the show notes page at liapodcast.org slash EP13. That's liapodcast.org slash EP number 13. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Life Insure Acad and share this episode. Share it with other agents that might be having the same questions and issues that you might be facing uh, and let them know that we have more content coming. So we'll catch you on next week's episode. Stay healthy and go be a difference maker.